Coming up on Thursday, the Expedition 30 crew will also have a uh, spacewalk. Two Russian crew members, Oleg Kononenko and Anton Shikaplarov, are going to be stepping outside to conduct a Russian EVA out of the Russian segment of the International Space Station. We are pleased to be joined by Glenda Brown, who is here inside Mission Control. She's going to be the lead spacewalk officer for the Houston team here inside Mission Control on Thursday uh, during all those activities. So, Glenda, welcome. Uh, first of all, tell us a little bit about what the crew is going to be doing on Thursday whenever they step outside. Well, they've got a couple of of activities that are on their nominal timeline, uh, the first of which will be to move the Strela 1 from the uh, Piers uh, airlock up to the new airlock uh, for use on future EVAs. Um, and they'll be using one Strela to move the other Strela. You can see that uh, coming up here on the video that we're playing. Um, so the first part of this EVA, um, they'll egress out of the Piers airlock. Uh, onto the EVA ladder, and then um, move over to the Strela One. Um, one crew member gets in position to at the controls. They have a little foot plate that they stand on, and then some hand cranks that move it around. The other crew member gets uh, down at the uh, end effector end of it, releases it uh, from some straps that they have that are just holding it in position. Um, Move it around to the Strela 2, which is on the kind of on the other side of the Pierce airlock. And uh, once uh, they're translated over to the other side, they begin to um, release the other one. Um, now, yeah, I guess before they do that, they have uh, an extension boom that goes on to the first one. That's needed so that it can actually reach around onto the other side. You can see it. Uh, it it it. Um, telescopes out and then it has a gimbal mechanism so it can kind of bend around. Um, then the uh, one operator uh, bends it around to, to the other Strela, as you can see here uh, in the video. These, uh, these Strela booms are kind of interesting because they, they, they're, they basically they telescope out, right? And then the crew can use them to move around. It's a little bit different with how we do things on the U.S. segment, which is sort of a hand-over-hand -hand sort of maneuver down down the truss segment and things like that, which people have seen uh, during shuttle missions. But talk about some of the other differences between Russian spacewalks and U.S. spacewalks in terms of how the crew gets prepared for it, what they do whenever they're outside. You know, how do you interact with a Russian team? It, it's, it's, it's really kind of a different world. It is a different world, and it starts right there with the Strela boom. So that, that's a hand-operated um, telescoping pole where we have a robotically operated um, SSRMS, the, the Canadian robot arm that's on uh, the U.S. segment. Um, so the crew members on a U.S. EVA would just ride on that arm while a uh, robot operator inside kind of drives them around. That's one difference in the actual execution of the EVA. You mentioned uh, translation. That's a little bit different. We have a single safety tether that um, you anchor down in one point at one point and then basically reel out to the end of it, translating around wherever you like. Um, the Russians have been using a different hand-over-hand -hand technique um, from the very beginning of their first spacewalks, just two different techniques of how you do EVA. Um, you ask about preparation. Uh, the preparation for us on these EVAs is completely different. Um, for a U.S. EVA, um, our team here in Houston puts the whole thing together. We run it over in the neutral buoyancy laboratory. We build the procedures, um, train the crew. All of that is done right here in Houston. Uh, for the Russian EVAs, um, they have a, a similar development process, but they basically have two or three specialists that develop a short list of tasks that they're going to do. Um, they'll write their procedures, and then they train in the hydro lab. They tend to do uh, more skills-based training, which is just the very how do you do the task part. They don't train end-to-end -end like we do, where they start at the airlock and go through all of their EVA tasks for the day, kind of practicing in a dress rehearsal kind of way. Um, they just go from one individual task to the next. Um, we are starting to train some more like that. Uh, here wow. on the U.S. side as well in preparation for the maintenance EVAs. We never know what's going to go wrong on the station, so we have to prepare in a skills-based way on all those various tasks. Let's talk about the suits themselves, and for those of you who are going to be watching tomorrow, we're actually going to have a live shot from the spacesuit lab here at the Johnson Space Center where we have one of the Orlon spacesuits, which is what uh, the crew will be using on Thursday. They're quite different than the EMUs, the, uh, or the, the white spacesuits that people know from the U.S. side. 
Um, but they're at a different pressure too. So the U.S. you know the U.S. suits are down at like 4.3 or something like that psi, and the, the Russian suits are a little bit higher, right? That's right, Josh. And what that does for the crew member um, on our side um, when we use the lower suit pressure, the good part of that is that. Um, it's less resistance in the suit. Easier so, to use, yeah. yeah, it's a little easier to use. Uh, you don't have to push so hard against the suit. Compressing the hands is a little bit easier in the gloves. It's not just all blown up and, and, uh, and stiff and hard at 8 psi. Like the Russian suit, it's at 4 psi. So, a little easier to move. Um, so that's one difference um, with the pressure. On the other side of things, because they're at a higher uh, uh, pressure, they, um, they don't have to pre-breathe as long. So, um, which has to get their bodies ready to get all the nitrogen out of their blood, and it, which is what, right, you know, to prevent the, the bends. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, people saw that during the shuttle missions and, and station spacewalks that they would camp out, used to camp out inside the Quest airlock, and now we kind of change that a little bit. We do sort of an exercise protocol. Right, right. So we used to um, bring the whole. Um, Inside of the joints and Let's see, on the shuttle world, long ago, we brought the whole uh, cabin down to 10.2 PSI. Right. Then we went over to the space station, and we were able to just depress the equipment lock and the crew lock uh, down to 10. Uh, 0.2 a psi overnight, and uh, that would allow us to pre-breathe at that lower pressure, purging the nitrogen from the tissues to prevent bends. Um, and then recently, we've moved to the um, um, exercise protocol or the aisle protocol. It's in-suit light exercise, and um, that allows us to pre-breathe um, in the suit for a short period of time. Um, about an hour or so in addition to what we had been doing and um, in, in the pressure in the suited portion of it. And they just move around a little bit and that helps purge those, um, the purge the nitrogen from their systems as well. So that's how we do it on the U.S. side. But on the Russian side, because it's a higher suit pressure, they just basically bring the suit pressure down, ingress the suits, bring the suit pressure down uh, to their nominal operating pressure, pressure pre-breathe there for just a little while and basically as long as it takes them to do their other operations to get out the door. And they're already and acclimated then they're out. and they're done. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. So everything that's checked out today, the Orlon suits, they uh, they basically put them on and, and made sure everything was ready to go and everything was okay from what I heard, correct? Yeah, we'll call that a dress rehearsal. Um, they started about 2 a.m. Uh, local Houston time. Uh, they started checking out um, all of their airlock systems and uh, then got into the space suits and tried, tried the suit sizing. They had to make a few adjustments. Uh, the way their suit adjusts in size is different than ours. Ours has a bunch of different components that we size pretty specifically to the crew member. For the Russians, they have kind of a one-size-fits-all, right. uh, and they have um, some uh, cam adjustments, some, um, some uh, arm and leg length adjustments. Basically, think of it as a big uh, cinch cord that you pull to make the leg shorter or the arm shorter, and uh, they have to make some of those adjustments. They do that in their dry run, wow. uh, which is what they were doing today. Uh, they got all that suit sizing uh, taken care of. It uh, took one crew member a little bit longer than the other one. Uh, Oleg has some uh, more experience than Anton does, so it took them him just a little longer to get his done. Um, and then after that, they actually practice some translations while they're in their airlock. It's a pretty good size airlock, so they can move around quite a bit, give them a chance to get acclimated before they actually go outside to do their spacewalk. Uh, they check some of the tools, some of the tools that are being provided by uh, from the U.S. side. They're using some of our tools, some tethers and stuff that give them some added capability that they don't have on their own tools. Um, so they checked out some of those, and all of that worked really well. Well, I think everything's set for Thursday. If you're going to be watching live with us, we'll have our live coverage at about uh, a little after 7.45 a.m. Central Time, 8.45 a.m. Eastern Time, and the spacewalk will get kicked off about 30 minutes later at 8.15 a.m. Central Time, 9.15 a.m. Eastern Time. It'll run for about five and a half, six hours if everything goes according to plan. So, Glenda, thank you very much for coming by. We'll see you Thursday. Okay. Right. See you then.